Hello, welcome to introduction to Java programming. In this session, we will discuss about uh, super keyword, super constructor, and at the rate uh, override annotation as part of inheritance part three. Let's begin. In the previous session, we have actually seen about uh, what is inheritance, what will happen in inheritance, what all uh, a subclass can acquire from the parent class, and what is overriding, what is overloading, what is polymorphism. So these details we have understood. Let's now understand something which is very important in inheritance called super. Super keyword. What is a super keyword? What is the purpose of it? Yeah, super keyword has a very uh, useful purpose and very important purpose in uh, Java's inheritance. We know uh, in Java, whenever there is inheritance, only the non-private members are getting inherited. That means data members and methods. What about the constructors? Does constructors be inherited? No. Constructors will not get inherited in the inheritance of Java. Right? But if in if constructors are not inherited, then how do we access? How do we access the constructor from the child class? You may ask actually why I have to access. Then if you are not accessing, how the parent class members will be part of your, your child class object. So there is a need to access constructors. Without constructors, object cannot be created. I have a child class and I have a parent class. My child class has nothing, but my parent has so many data members. Right? And all those data members are getting constructed over there with a default constructor or a parameterized constructor in the parent. Now, being a child class, I need to access that particular constructor. Otherwise, my child object cannot be constructed with the parent members. So that's why, that's why super keyword is so important. Since constructors are not inheritable, we can actually use super to invoke the constructor. So the third point is very important point actually, and very useful. Even though these variables and methods, we can actually access using, variables can be accessed using getters there is a way methods right away public they can be accessed usually they can be public and can be accessed but constructors are the things which are not getting inherited and to actually access them we need some mechanism and super provides that particular mechanism let's understand what is super so super is a keyword and which say a reference variable that refers to immediate parent class that refers to immediate parent class. Why I'm saying immediate parent class? We can have inheritance hierarchy, a chain of classes. Class A acquires from B and B acquires from C. C can acquire from D, D can acquire from E. Finally, everything is chain of object class in Java. Right? We can have a chain of hierarchy. So if you are using super in class A and it refers to its immediate parent class B. If you use super in B, it refers it immediate parent class C. Like that, uh, super always refers to the immediate parent class. What all can be done using super? Super, by using super, you can actually access your immediate parent class variables. You can actually access your immediate parent class methods. And by using the super constructor notation, the notation also different actually. So by using super followed by the parenthesis, this will pronounce as super constructor. By using this, we can actually access uh, immediate parent class constructor. So if it is parameterized, parameterized constructor, default, default constructor. Okay, so that's about uh, the super keyword. Okay, so now let's understand the super keyword with a programmatic example. Now let me actually go to my employee class. So here, I don't have any constructor written. I didn't have any constructor written, right? So deliberately in the previous examples, I have not written any constructor. So this is the time now, right, to constructor. Why I have not written constructor? I know constructors are not inheritable and in order to access, you require a super, right? So that's why 
deliberately i have avoided writing the constructor but this is high time where we have to write it okay so how to write a constructor how to make uh, your setter as a constructor a setter can be eliminated by writing a constructor that we know so just use the name employee public employee there is no written type and rest all will be same and this becomes a constructor constructor is a special method whose name is same as the class name and it has it is written with any written written with any uh, a written type actually so that means it's not written with any written type so construct is not going to write uh, construct is not going to return construct is going to return some value but construct is written without any written type actually but what it returns it returns the class type that is employee class type so now this has become like a constructor to me so what kind of constructor it is parameterized constructor the parameterized constructor which is actually constructing all the three instance members I have three instance members and all the three instance members are being constructed using this now i have this getter uh, basic get this is there so this actually i am keeping as it is because when i'm in my overridden method this get basic is required and the disk method to display and calculate salary method to calculate so this is my employee class now my employee class has a constructor, right? Yeah, so let me keep my class compiled and ready. So Java C employee.java. Yeah, my dot class file is ready. Now when you say Java P, you don't have any default constructor. Let's see here, you don't have any default constructor, but we have a parameterized constructor which I have written. We know when a constructor we write, if, if you write a constructor and default constructor is not going to get supplied fine yeah so now let me go to my child class that is tech emp public class tech emp extends emp now one thing one has to remember if your parent class has a constructor if your parent class has a constructor we must write constructor you must have to have a constructor so this is the rule of Java. So if a parent class has no constructor, that means default constructor, and you also have a default constructor, you need not to write. The compiler will take care by supplying the default constructor for parent and by supplying default constructor for child as well as a super call also. But if your parent has a constructor, you must have to have a constructor. Okay. If your parent has constructor. Right, we must have to write a constructor now. And of course, I have a child specific member that is bonus. Now I am going to write a constructor so I don't require any setter method. So this setter method is not at all required. And a child specific member is also there. So that can actually be constructed uh, when we construct the constructor. So now public tech EMP. Now I have to construct actually. So I have to construct an object of the technical employee how many values i am going to have in the technical employee so eid e name and basic these are the instance members through my parent and the bonus is of my own actually so i need to have all these things to be constructed so these are all local variables right don't think i am accessing uh, the private members i am not accessing private members these are just my local variables along with the local variables i need to construct my bonus as well okay so now yeah you cannot actually access the private members directly so you cannot say that this dot eid equal to eid this is not possible because this dot eid current object eid you don't have eid with you because eid is a private member it's not available to you so this is not possible to write so what can be done we have the super constructor right we have the super constructor so i use this super i use the super and i will pass eid e name and basic okay so this actually calls parents otherwise we can say invokes it invokes parents constructor so who is a parent employee so it invokes the parent constructor first and one more thing is Whenever you use super constructor, that must be the first statement. It always should be 
the first statement. So this constructor and super constructor both should be the first statements if at all you are writing any constructor. Okay, they will compete for the first line actually. So why like this? So if at all you want to construct a child object, you have to construct your parent object first. That means your parent data first because you, are, you have inheritance, right? So you want to construct a child object, construct the parent instance variables first and then your child specific things. That's why super constructor must always be the first statement. Once that is done, then you can actually have your uh, instance members constructed. So we have one a bonus, this dot bonus equal to bonus. So this is what uh, we have to do whenever we whenever we have a constructor defined in the parent class. So in the parent class, we have a constructor which actually taking three data members uh, as uh, local variables. And here I am passing the same uh, uh, typed values, right? So int EID, string ename and double basic. So it should match. So whenever I'm creating a, const a techie MP object, first it goes to my parent and it actually takes EID, ename, basic and construct with the default values in my child object. And this bonus is getting constructed uh, with the default value, right? Uh, later, whatever the values I pass during my construction, those values will get initialized. So that is actually is going to happen. So this is the new thing uh, that we have to discuss over here. Right, since constructors are not inheritable, we have to use the super constructor. So here, the super constructor I'm using is a parameterized constructor. And whenever you use super, it must be the first statement. So now I have my this method getting overridden. And now you can actually understand this action. So super dot disp. So now we understand, right? Super is a reference variable which refers to immediate parent class. Uh, variables, methods, and constructors. So here I am saying super dot disp. Then it is referring to my parent class method that is disp. Okay, so I am overriding my disp method, and in the in the definition I have a, uh, a call to my disp method, and then I am printing the bonus as well. And this overriding the cal salary method is straight away fine. So we are actually accessing the basic using get basic, and then I am adding the bonus. Okay, so my technical employee class is ready now. So only the difference is we had a constructor. Why you require a constructor? Because your parent has a constructor. Since your parent has a constructor, super is not supplied by your compiler now. You have to have, you have to write your constructor and invoke that super constructor. So that's the rule. That is understand, uh, that you will understand. So everything is clear actually. Now I can create a technical employee object. Technical employee, uh, tech employee, T equal to new tech employee. So now I don't have a setter, right? So I need to construct the values actually. So when I'm, a construct, when I'm calling my constructor, I need to pass. So there are four values to be passed. They are, they are actually uh, EID, one, two, three, four is EID. And let's say name is QWERTY. And then you have certain basic, let's say one lakh, just to understand the salary, uh, one lakh and now we need to pass the bonus actually. So the bonus is let's say uh, 10,000, right? So I'm not setting the bonus separately. I am constructing the bonus as part of my constructor. So I'm eliminating the need of a setter actually. So then straight away you call this method. Your this method is going to print bonus as well because we have overridden it. And we are going to call the cal salary method also. The cal salary method. Right, so the overridden cal salary method, that means uh, the method that is going to have, the bonus also added is going to come actually. So that's it. So this is actually the way we write usually. Because when we write a class, we will have data members, constructors, and methods. So constructor can be invoked from a child class using the super constructor. And our parent class methods can be invoked using the super. And even if required, variables also can be uh, invoked using a super keyword actually. Okay, so let me save this and let me compile now. Java C techemp.java. Okay, so there was a problem. Okay. Somewhere I am using set emp. 
uh, let me actually check here line number 29 i think this is not uh, saved actually so let me save this let me save this okay so that's why the error is coming up yeah java c tech employee dot java yeah compiled successfully so earlier problem is i have not saved the code yeah when i run actually java tech emp now we are going to see yeah this is the disk method i have, of course i have only two method calls right uh, one is the disk method so disk method is actually printing all the data along with the bonus and cal salary it is actually calculating the salary so one lakh and eighty percent one lakh eighty and in the salary bonus is also getting added so it is one lakh ninety thousand right so this is the use of the super keyword that's why we have the super also understand so super is referred to immediate parent class variables methods and constructor and especially we need to access constructor so this is going to be an important thing because constructors are not inheritable okay so i uh, hope uh, this super is clear hope this super is clear because everything is working everything is working fine so we are getting that data also properly and uh, yeah so for example you you have some other constructor you can actually invoke it using super in the other constructor as well so if some default constructor is there you can pass the default super call and you can call the parent class methods because constructor overloading is there right so for example here i have one more default constructor or one more parameterized constructor then from here from other constructors i can actually invoke all those constructor using the super okay so if you understand the super now let's understand about this at the rate override so we have used at the rate override whenever i am overriding it okay so what happens when you say override so the at the rate override annotation indicates that the child class method is overwriting or redefining the base class method okay so what is the use of it actually compiler wants if the annotated method doesn't actually override that means here we are saying this method is overriding the parent class immediate parent class uh, this method and here uh, cal salary is overriding the immediate parent class cal salary okay if you are not overriding then actually uh, compiler gives as a warning okay so now let me tell you uh, to make it very much clear see when i'm overriding uh, i'm thinking i'm overriding but by mistake actually the small s has come up in place of capital s i'm just saying cal salary everything is small only here but i'm thinking i'm overriding it i'm thinking i'm overriding it okay uh, but but by mistake uh smallest came in place of capital s now see i am saying compiler that i am overriding my parent class method that's why i am saying at the rate override now you compile what is and see what is the answer for from the compiler actually so first let me save this save this and my cal salary method is in smaller case now i am thinking i am overriding it and when i am compiling now my compiler helps me now my compiler says method does not override or implement a method from super type so you are saying you are overriding but you are not at all overriding here you are saying you are overriding but you are not at all overriding at the rate annotation method does not override or implement so then i will go and check what is the problem actually i am overriding but what is the problem so then i will understand that okay so this small s actually has come here so they have to keep capital s okay now now actually i am overriding right so now i compile my compiler happily compiles it without any error okay for example this override annotation is not there override annotation is not there and still you are doing a mistake by mistake small s has come into small s has come into right now i compile i compile now what the compiler will do compiler is not going to give any error because compiler treats this cal salary where everything is small as a separate method or a new child specific method because you are not telling you are overriding you are not using the annotation it 
it it assumes that this is actually a new specific method and it compiles it but i am thinking i am overriding it now when i run actually see the problem what is the salary i am getting i am i am getting a salary of only like 80 because i am not getting the overridden salary because my method when i am calling i am calling cal salary with capital s but here i made a mistake i don't know that i i, I did a mistake also right and when i process the salaries my salary is coming 10000 less it's a huge problem it's a huge problem for the hr department if they process wrong salaries right so if you are not writing at the rate override you understand the problem right so it is treated as a child specific method you are thinking it's you are overriding but it is treated as a child specific method compiler will not give you any problem but when you make a calls when you make actually calls to those methods and this method will never get called your previous method parent method is getting called that's a problem right so that's why keep always at the rate override so if you are not overriding then compiler immediately tells you compiler is telling now so they, i didn't find any method called cal salary where s is small so now then i come and i correct myself and we will actually uh, get the proper outcome actually so now come let me compile compile successfully and when i run now the salary you can see one like 90 bonus is also added earlier one like 80 only you are getting actually okay so this is about uh, the inheritance okay uh, with the uh, constructors and how we are invoking the constructor with the uh, super constructor so super constructor when used must always be the first statement in a constructor that's also one of the point so uh, this point i would like to write actually this and the super whenever you use they must be the first statements this constructor and super constructor whenever they use they must be the first statement where we will use we will use them in constructors only whenever you use them in constructors they should be the first statement so this and super doesn't coexist because they always compete for first line so they will not coexist and of course this and super cannot exist in static context also because this and super refers to objects this refers to current object super refers to immediate parent class object they, they don't actually uh, exist in a static context hope you have understood i will see you in the next session thank you